All right, we are at Lee's Port Flea Market. I don't know that I've ever been here, but here we are. I'm not sure how big this place is. It's more than under here. Does it go all the way down there? Okay, all right, we're gonna check it out. We're gonna see what bargains there are to be had. What are you looking for, sweetie? Uh, anything I can make money on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go. Leesport Farmer's Market. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been here. Ooh, that car has a lot of stuff in it. Oh, this looks like fun. We're digging. Okay, lots of treasure already. I'm gonna do the normal scoping out the land. I don't know what time it is. Sweetie, what time is it? Oh, I didn't know you had to. 7.30. Okay, got the official time check, 7.30. Looks to be some Victoria's Secrets, maybe. Mm, not Victoria's Secrets, this is pretty. dollars a piece or two for five on any of these okay and more in the box down do you have any old victoria's secrets do you know or is it all so. okay um i'm selling them for somebody who's you know mother had, had it okay had thank you oscar de la renta okay gonna have to put the camera down but this looks good Okay, we were in here 30 seconds. A whole bag of vintage lingerie, Lily of France, Victoria's Secret. They were $3 each or two for five. So I wound up buying $20 worth, definitely over $200 worth here. 10 times in my money is great. All right, let's keep going. This is the kind of flea market that we love. Nothing is curated, just stuff put out on the table. Look at this horn here. I'm gonna take a look at this. Okay, that's very cool. This is beautiful, just laying on a table as a decoration. I'm sure it really works though. I'm not gonna try it. <laughs> I don't think it will work. It's an old bow. Okay, I'm gonna need my cart. I did bring a cart today. Are you guys proud of me? Thanks, sweetie. Do you want to? You want me to go back to the car and get the cart? Because I'm gonna. We're gonna yeah, buy I'll more the, stuff. You don't mind? Cart. Thank you, sweetie. Is this man the best man ever? He just took my bag and he's going back to the car to get the cart for us. Huh? What is this piece here? It's like a tapestry on the ground. Is this your stuff? Okay. Oh, lots of holes. Darn. Look at that graphic. Beautiful, but a little bit past its prime. Don't worry about them holes. It's just the air comes up underneath. It's like a filtration. <laughs> it's the summer you'll, weight you'll, blanket. You'll never have moldy floors. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, my goodness. That's the claim to our rugs. <laughs> Look at this seashell. Is it part of a light? Looks like it's been drilled for a light. Ooh, I bet you this is. Okay, so it's, this goes on a socket and then this glows, it's been carved. Wonder what they want for this. How much for your seashell? See, that, you put the hose nozzle on there, that's how you vacuum the rug. No electric. That's how it works. What are you asking for it? Five. Okay. Hmm. Five dollars. Okay, so this is great that the whole flea market is covered by this roof. 
So if it rains, the flea market still goes on. I love that. Let's take a look at what's on this side. Oh, look at this little hot dog dog, Dachshund. Oh, it's iron, that's cool. And I think dog dishes sit in that. Wonder what they're asking for him. He is cute. That actually, I think it might have been for as a bowl to feed your dog or you could use it to make a planter out of it. Yeah, or, it's cute. It's pretty cool that it's cast iron. What are you asking for it? I do 25 on it. That's cute. It's got some weight to it. That has nice color to it. Look at that, that's an old one. We've got a ghost, very cool. Here I'm gonna stop the video to insert this little screenshot of a recently sold item in my eBay store. Really two items. I found these small blow molds, 13 inches high, in a Goodwill probably a couple of months ago and wanted to show you guys what kind of money blow molds can bring. One of these was working, it did light up and was missing its pumpkin head. The other one, I don't believe it had its light, still brought $199.50 and so easy to ship. So if you guys are not aware that blow molds, the older ones can bring very good money, I just wanted to show you this sale so you can see why I'm looking at blow molds at the flea market. All right, let's get back to the video. I imagine they know what they have. All right, even though this is not real, of course, it's just a home decor piece, probably from Ross, it looks like. Kind of cool. I'd probably pay, I don't know, three, maybe five. All right, let's keep going, see what else jumps out at us. There's so much here, you really have to just like take a chance and just dive in and just look at things that are interesting. Like look at this bellows, $25. Ooh, this is heavy, heavier than I thought. Okay, this is just resin. I don't think this is wood. No, that's plastic. Kind of cool. Love and romance, that's sweet. I forget what these are called. Hey, sweetie, do you know what these are called? There's a name to those can't remember all right what else are we seeing horseshoes a basket of eggs citizens gas <laughs> that's kind of funny that an egg says citizens gas on it all right okay I told myself no more wood balls although they sell really well and try to look at things other than baskets. Look at this basket. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Too big to ship. I like the baskets where the handle falls down. Thank you. Oh, this sweet little basket. Look at that. Oh, it's two baskets. I wonder if these hung on either side of a donkey. Could that even be? Now I'm just making stuff up. I, can't, I see a price tag down there, but I don't know what it says. I kind of like the pattern of this one. I don't know that I need two of them. Okay, if we find a big basket with a pattern like that, that would be lovely. There's some cloth. Thank you. All right, lots of jewelry. I don't know that I'm gonna do jewelry today because jewelry is just so extensive here. Some big lamps. I'm scanning. Wow, look at this big ship. The Kathleen. Who was Kathleen? She was very special to have a whole big boat named after her. Oh, this guy is wonderful. 75. He is stone of some sort. Wow, that is amazing. Okay, I have sold these before. <laughs> I might have one left. I picked up a lot of like 10 bullet belts. I'm sure there's a better name to it. All right, lots of jewelry. I just said I wasn't picking up jewelry. 
Okay, I've lost Roger. He's back there pushing, pushing the cart with the dog in it. Did he buy something? Oh, I think he bought something. <sighs> What'd you get? How much? How much? Five? Okay. You said you'd pay five. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say three to five, but five is good. It's Ross's, but that's really good. I like the shape of that. What'd you get? What is that? A jacket? Uh, Green Bay Packers. Green Bay. What'd you pay for it? Ten. Ten? Brand new. Really? He said 20, and I said, I'll pass. <laughs> he said, how about 10? Good. Good, sweetie. That's my man. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna try to zoom in on things instead of just passing everything over. But whenever I get to a flea market like this, I feel like I really have to like scope out the land and catch anything that's really good. And then I go back through and take a look at stuff. That lamp is kind of gorgeous. Look at the silver base on it. Some Pottery from Portugal. Okay, this is kind of lovely. This almost seems etched. Wow, it's heavy, heavier than I thought. Huh. Oh, it's an engraving. That's what it's called, not etched. It's engraved. Okay, that's kind of sweet. Martini engraving, hand painted. It's genuine. <laughs> okay, we've got the bag today. I'm getting what's mine. Look at this little creamer. Oh, it's a shame it's got chips. Not too bad though, but boy is that sweet. Made in Italy. And it's got some other markings on it. Mm, quite a bit of damage, but what a sweet aesthetic. I wonder how old that is. Looks to be quite old. What are you asking for this? A dollar. Oh, how could I turn that off? Yeah. Oh, I looked right at it. Yeah, no, and I missed it. That's sweet. I really like this. Uh, just the shape or I like old Italy. pottery I like Italy yeah I like uh, Italy everything Italy. yeah oh look at that the ceramic fruit yeah. <laughs> I can hold on to that thank you thank you thank you this is cute too <laughs> in purple five dollars look at the ceramic fruit oh they're all fixed wow <laughs> those Italians <laughs> I Amazing. Five on, five on that. Okay. And the little little basket up front, I think, was Italy. Let me take a look at that. Hand painted for somebody. Am I looking right at Italy? Hand painted for somebody. Not sure what that says. This doesn't look to be Italy to me, but what do I know? Not much. Okay, I'm gonna go with the Italian creamer. Do we see anything else? Okay, don't normally like clear glass, but the candlesticks are very interesting. That's a beautiful shape, yeah. Three dollars a pair. Three dollars a pair. Any idea who makes them? No, but it's very clear glass. Yeah, so yeah, it is. Nicer that, than just yeah, nature. than cheap glass. Yeah. <laughs> it's quality clear glass. Yeah, quality. Yes. I didn't think they were chipped or anything. Yeah, no, they look good. I'll take those too. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Up. Thank you so much. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, it's like glass animal. Well, that's a flower frog. Actually. It is. How interesting. I think that's 32. Cambridge, okay. Mistaken. Yep. All right, guys. This is what Cambridge. I don't see any sticker. One dollar each. So even though things are marked two dollars, I guess they're one dollar. That's plastic or. It almost looks like lucite. Very clear. With a hibiscus. So I think I'm out to a dollar piece. 
Lots of jewelry. I do 20 today, but that's it. Okay, but we're not looking at jewelry, right? <laughs> advertisement on it is pretty cool. Okay, lots of loud talkers here. Dollar each in that box. Oh, look at these little mood mood paintings, but they have damage. Looks like the frames have been painted. I don't think orange. Oh, maybe orange was the original color. Six dollars. Plastic. This looks to be chalkware. It's a black kitty, five dollars. This looks to be maybe Poland. Mm, made in somewhere. I don't know what that says. There's something about old tile that I absolutely love. Look at the thickness of this. Is this floor tile? It seems to be a border because it has the striping on one side. So maybe a border for a kitchen. That is stunning. I don't know what else you would use it for. I guess you could frame it and make it artwork. This looks like a Dutch design to me. Like a Pennsylvania Dutch maybe? Not sure. Boy, is that pretty. I wonder what they want for those tiles. So they're very heavy to ship. And I'm thinking that's quite old. Ah, uh, paint by numbers. I wonder if those are still popular. I might have one or two left in inventory. I've probably sold, I'm going to guess, 20 or 30 paint by numbers. All right, lots of digging in this area. And some brass bookends with ducks on them. Oh, much lighter than I expected. I guess they're hollow underneath the felt. Look at that old felt. Quite pretty. <laughs> okay, $80. This thing is gorgeous. Why is it the minute I declare I'm not picking up anything big or oversized? <laughs> I want everything big and oversized. Okay, so it is hollow. This is gorgeous. $80. I have no idea the value of this, but that is so pretty. I have never seen something like that. I mean, it's not a bookend. It's just a, a bust, I'm going to call it. Just lovely. Okay, he does have a green verdigris in his mouth. So what does that even mean? Brass? Brass over copper? I guess you wouldn't put brass over copper. That is just gorgeous. <laughs> what you finding, honey? Jerseys. I don't know how much they are. There's nobody here. So. Oh, they're free. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to get the jerseys three for 20. Okay. He's calling a guy. Okay. He wanted, he wanted eight dollars a piece. Calling a guy who knows a guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I ain't said no to that. Okay, that's fine. Sorry. No problem. All right, I did see a wooden bowl down there, but ha. Uh, ha. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He wants 30, I offered him 20, he said 25, which is probably, you know, that's fair. I just don't know what I would do with the bowl. I don't want to be trying to sell a bowl for, you know, way more than what, say, Home Goods is selling it for. Because nowadays you can find so many wood bowls, you know, in the home decor stores, which makes it very hard. Now, this one is a little bit older. So, this is the one I'm considering. It seems like this has been recently sanded and the vendor said it's made out of a tree root. I don't know about that. It could be made out of a burl, but I don't think that either. Maybe Roger would know what kind of wood it is. And if he doesn't, he'll make it up and <laughs> make me believe it. I do like the aesthetic of this. So the vendor wants 25 for it does have a lovely shape. I like that it's very shallow. That's really nice. And the cracks just add to character. There's very few things where when you see a flaw, it's not really a problem. 
Hmm, I do want that, but I don't know if that's too much. When we go to flea markets in Pennsylvania, we see a lot of this type of ethnic wood decor, I'm going to call it. And I'm not sure where this is being imported from. Some of it is really interesting. Like, I love these little stools. This is all made out of wood. And they're really nicely made. This is a beautiful bowl. Probably see about four or five sellers that have these type of wares. Now, while it's not everybody's taste, like I said, like this little stool is beautiful. Very heavy. I wonder if they have trencher bowls. I love a good trencher bowl. Here's a bowl here. Again, I don't know what type of wood this is. This might be the same vendor that's at Roots that I was showing you. That is a gorgeous bowl. Looks to be old. I don't know it's as old as it's representing, but very, very cool. Okay, so we had donuts inside and warmed up a little bit. Now we're back outside. I was looking at this little cat. He does have a chip on his ear. Kind of like a, a mean little sad face. We love the mean ones. Why do I like a mean cat? It always makes me laugh. Oh, I see some owls here. Let's take a look at these owls. I think they're owls. Oh, that's kind of cool. What is that made out of? I'm not sure what, what that's made out of. Huh. I kind of like those for some reason. Like I said, I have no idea what these are. Huh. Interesting. I'm going to see how much those are. All right, guys. So I found out that the mean kitty with a little bit of a chip is $1. Do we love a mean kitty? Yes, we do. We're going to take him home. So many of the inside buildings have stores like this, where it's just like items, products, poured into boxes, and you're just buying like groceries. So of course, Roger has to look at all the tandy cakes and all that. What are these called? Tasty cake. Grand, I love Grandma's. these. Grandma's. You do? Yeah. They're 50, 50 cents. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today is a flea market day. Roger and I went to Leesport Flea Market. It was my first time. I was a first timer, and I think I did pretty good. Lots of interesting items. A lot of it I don't know anything about or what it'll bring. But now, having gotten home and spread all the things out and looked up a few things, I will share with you if I know what the items will bring on eBay. I also wanted to share that my Amazon affiliate links is in the item description of this video. If you want to go see what some of my favorite items are. These are items that are personal items, face creams I use, things I use for my household and for the business. So many of you ask like, where do you get your poly bags? I've listed all of that in my affiliate links. Just a disclaimer, I do get a small kickback if you purchase through that link, but you don't pay any more than you would if you just went onto Amazon. So today we're just gonna look at a few of the pieces that I found. Now, I think the theme of this haul is gonna be what in the world did I buy? <laughs> I don't have a lot of knowledge of any of this stuff. A lot of it was not familiar, but I do like purchasing that way. And um, as you can tell from my Instagram, almost always it works out really well. Recently, I showed a set of Pottery Barn Christmas stockings and I had them in my store less than 24 hours. Something that I paid $2 for sold for $100. So that is the kind of profit you can make from flea market items. And I love a good flea market. All right, we're going to get started with this most unusual piece. This thing is, I don't even know if this came together originally. So it is a brass fish head, like a gargoyle one. I don't think it's koi. I think there probably is a special name for this type of look. And then this steer horn is attached. This is a genuine horn. And when I saw this, I could not believe it. I think I paid $10 for it. Most of this will be in the video um, that I'll put before this haul. So we'll have a general idea. You'll see on film what I paid for items. And this thing is just crazy good. Now the bottom of this does have a sticker and it is 
Andrea Sadek, or Sadek, S-A-D-E-K. So I know that's where the fish head came from, but I'm not sure if this horn was originally in this fish head or this was an aftermarket thing, but both pieces are gorgeous. And in the title of this, I will put oddity. When you find items that are a one of, that are handmade, something that's really like, what in the world is that? I like to add the title oddity to my keywords and that helps people that are looking for really unusual items or people that are just curious, that helps them find my item. All right, so that is item number one. I imagine this is gonna bring, I'm gonna guess $85, something like that, 80, 85. That is item number one. Item number two, I did catch on film. It is a carved seashell. This almost reminds me of scrimshaw. Now scrimshaw is totally different. That is usually where um, whale teeth were carved back in the whaling days. There are so many imitations, copies, oh, fakes. So you really wanna be careful if you buy into that market. But this is a carved seashell. And what I love about it, it has a brass finding. And I believe a small chandelier light bulb would fit inside this, maybe like one of the Christmas size bulbs. And it would sit on a, on a stand and it would light up, just beautiful. So hopefully you guys will be able to see the carving on it. I do have a little bit of lighting set up to help us. And this thing is just gorgeous. So that is item number two. I'm not sure what this will bring because I did not research this. I just went on the aesthetic of it. And even to drill out the bottom of the shell and then carve this whole thing, this is a true craftsman. It looks like it is a volcano erupting, maybe Hawaii, just a guess. Sticking with the natural or organic material items, this is a little horn bowl. I believe this is bovine, meaning cow, and it has like a tiger striping on the back. That's why I really liked it. Now this won't bring a lot of money, and I forgot what I paid for this, two or three dollars, I'm gonna say. I offered the vendor and they were happy to take it. And I'm thinking this is not gonna bring more than maybe 15 or 20 dollars. I will run comps to make sure, but I just love this aesthetic, so I can't pass these things up. So not a really high dollar profit item, but definitely worth picking up. Here's an item that I knew nothing about other than it seems to be solid copper. It's kind of like a cauldron pot. Maybe this is a little too shallow to be called a cauldron. Definitely has some age to it. And if I remember correctly, I paid $10 for it. That might have been a little bit high. I'm expecting this to sell probably 40 or 45. Now, if you find old copper, uh, a lot of it is from France and it's marked with one of the French companies. Of course, those can bring over $500 if they are true antique. This one does have age to it. I don't see any markings. I wish it was marked with one of the French companies but I still felt like this was worth saving, worth buying, and that is that item. I fell in love with this iron dachshund bowl holder. So I guess you buy little doggy bowls. It probably came with bowls in the beginning, and you feed your little dog out of it. How sweet is that? Now this could be a reproduction. The age on it does seem to be genuine. And when you look at iron items that have been um, fake to look old, you know, made to look old, a lot of times the rust or the discoloration is painted on. So if you look at it closely and it seems very even and all over painted, faux finish, you know you have a newer item. This one seems to be genuine and um, I thought somebody with a dachshund dog would just love it. So there it is there. Again, not a super high dollar item, but you have to remember at a flea market, most times I'm paying very little. So what did I pay for you? What did I pay for you, dog? I don't know, maybe it's in the video. Sorry, I'm forgetting. I should have written it down, but with everything else going on, it was a busy day. So Roger did come and help out. Yes, we did bring a shopping cart, which I'm not a big fan of, but between the two of us, it worked out okay to pull the cart. When I'm at the flea market by myself, I do not bring a cart. It's just too crazy to pull a cart, any kind of shopping cart with crowds of people there. It's just so cumbersome. But um, getting back to this dog, look how adorable he is. And I said yes to him. 
I also wanted to once again mention that if you see anything you want, it takes me probably from the time you're seeing the video, one to two weeks to get it all into my store because I'm processing so much inventory. On a daily week, I don't know how many pieces I'm processing, over a hundred. So sometimes if I'm out shopping, you know, three days, it's just a lot. Now I do list everything, you guys know me, no death piles. I have listed every single thing I've purchased. I don't think I've ever not listed something and just left it in a pile somewhere. My mind doesn't work that way. It would drive me crazy. But like I said, if you want something from this haul, it's probably going to be a week or two and, um, and it'll be in my store, Lavender Clothesline. All right, let's take a look at the next item. I actually picked this up at Roots Flea Market in the last video, but I did want to show it closer because it's so beautifully painted. A gorgeous wood tray with a spring flower design. I love a tray like this. I think this is beautiful for either putting on a shelf in the, well, in any room, but I would love this in a kitchen, or even laying it flat on a, um, a bar, like a bar cart, and putting barware on it would be stunning, or even just on an occasional table and gathering your things together, even on a vanity to put all of your perfume bottles and things like that. Just gorgeous. I paid a couple of dollars for it, and um, I really like the wood. The next item that I showed was this little creamer or pitcher, beautifully painted. I believe this is all hand painted. I don't think it's transferware or a stencil. And the bottom has made in Italy with some numbers on it. Now it does have a little bit of wear slash chipping. The bottom has a shallow chip in the clay get out of the shot maybe it'll zoom in and around the mouth and the spout a little bit of chipping nothing horrible though I was on the fence about it and then the vendor said oh everything on the table is one dollar <laughs> sign me up <laughs> Although I don't gravitate towards $1 tables, if I'm already looking at the table and things become $1, it's very hard not to say, I'll just take it all. But then you have to realize that when you bring it home, you have to list it all. So I do try to be really picky with my items that I'm gonna wanna list them when I get home. That can be a real problem for us resellers is just buying lots of things and then not having the desire to list them. So make sure what you're picking up if you're a reseller, you're really gonna be interested and you're gonna want to list the item but this is gorgeous the painting is beautiful the whole aesthetic I love the shape of the creamer I even like this narrow spout so beautiful really well made and uh, made in Italy is a bonus next stop this might have been a big mistake huge <laughs> I don't remember what I paid for this it was cheap <laughs> so it's not that big a mistake this copper tray three cups I'm sure I'm missing a cup more three and it says solid copper and it has a little initial okay so what made me buy this the solid copper is beautiful just gorgeous copper is very collected people love to decorate with it even if they're not planning on using it it's gorgeous in still life when you set up vignettes in your home decor that looks like still life paintings so you have a very moody um, backdrop maybe a dark piece of furniture and then you put this copper on it with maybe some fake fruit or, or um, trying to think of what else would be stoneware would be beautiful this is really nice the thing with this is that it has the name of a beer I've never heard of I don't even know how to pronounce this I think it either says L-E-I-T-Z or S-E-I-T-Z. I'm going to show it to you. Leave a comment down below if you've heard of this beer before or if it's like a family-made beer. I'm not sure what's going on. Hopefully that shows on the camera. Like I said, I wish I had the fourth cup. That would probably be an easier sale, but... I said yes to it and it will be listed. All right, so a copper pitcher, three cups, and a tray. I have no idea what I'm going to ask for it. I don't think this is going to bring a lot. I'm thinking maybe 35. Another item that I always look for at flea markets are Lucchese boots. So Lucchese is the brand 
and the way that I look at boots quickly is I turn a boot over and I see what the bottom is made out of. If this bottom sole is like rubber or plastic, I don't even bother looking at the boot. Now some better companies will make a safety sole and it is, um, uh, I'm going to call it a plastic or a rubber, but in my experience it's always highly marked and that will tell me that it's a safety shoe. But for regular boots or shoes, when they have this type of leather sole, that causes me to look at the item more closely. You can see the wear on this one. So this is the brand Lucchese. If you find Lucchese's um, more rare or exotic leathers, sounds like there's something in here. <laughs> I was kind of afraid to put my hand in. Okay, somebody's keys. <laughs> I hope he's not looking for them. I'm not sure what that's to. Hmm. You know, if I see that vendor again, I will probably return these in case the vendor knows where the boots came from. A lot of the vendors at the flea market do house cleanouts, so, um, so I think sometimes they know where their items come from. Anyway, back to the boots. Um, if you find the more exotic leathers like ostrich, alligator, snakeskin, those can bring really good money. I did find, I'm going to say it was crocodile once, uh, my boots were quite worn, the ones that I had, and they still brought like three or four hundred dollars, but a lot of them can bring over a thousand dollars because, you know, it's a more rare skin. I don't think these are an exotic, you know, leather. I think this is just cowhide, and I don't know, this is Lucchese 2000, so it's not one of the more um, high-priced boots, but I think that I still will do well with these. I think I paid $10 for them. I try not to pay a lot for boots because you're waiting for the buyer with that size foot. You know, shoes, sometimes clothing can be a little bit like that, but say you have a medium blouse. There are a lot of women that are medium, but these are a nine double E. So I am waiting for the buyer whose foot is going to fit in this boot. I would never pay up for these. I wouldn't pay like $40 or $50 for them. I'm thinking I paid about $10. They do need a good cleaning, and I will clean them with the Martins Wonder Balsam. And that Martins is listed in my Amazon affiliates link in this video's description. So these boots are great. I'm thinking probably about $70, something like that. They're in fairly good shape. They just really need a good cleaning. And when when it's something like this, I enjoy the polishing. I'm really not big on cleaning shoes. Like if shoes are all funky and the soles are, uh, no, <laughs> not at this level. But boots, somehow it's very calming to sit there and just polish boots with the, uh, the Wonder Balsam. This next statue is just everything. <laughs> I love a cat expression when they're either um, very, um, what do we call that, anthropomorphic, where they look almost human. Now, most times, something like this is not considered human-like qualities, but cats have such expressions, and that's what I think I love about them. I don't think I've ever had a pet cat, but adorable. He does have a little bit of chipping, but I paid very little for him. It says $2 on the bottom. I think I paid a dollar for him. All right, I think that's all I'm gonna do out of the hard goods on the table, but I am gonna grab uh, some of the lingerie that I picked up. So when I first got to the flea market, one of the first tables, I think it was the first table that I looked at, there was this pile of lingerie. And in the beginning I thought, mm, is there Victoria's Secrets? Because I do like finding the older Victoria's Secrets, the gold label, but um, I soon realized there were some good pieces. So I'm gonna grab it from the back room Room. It's all washed, might be a little wrinkly, still has to be steamed, but we're going to look at a couple of those pieces. So if you're not familiar with vintage lingerie, most times the lingerie will have little tags that will say made in USA, made in France, you know, the country of origin, and you can usually tell by the printing on those tags about how old the item is, about. So I have learned to look at labels and, um, and see if the Union Made symbol is there. Those are, I think, I'm going to say before 1960, and then after that, a lot of the lingerie was made in China. That's my understanding of it. This first one is Angelique. It is a navy blue chemise. A chemise is a shorter nightgown, usually above the knee, and this is the tag.
I'm going to see if I can show you the label. Okay, so the label, the, the second label says Made in USA. The nightgowns, or I should say the lingerie, were $3 a piece or two for five. So I did keep in my mind that I wanted to pick up groups of two, and I wound up picking up eight pieces, so it cost me $20 for all of these, and I'm going to say this will bring over $200. I think in the video I mentioned that it'll probably bring uh, $200. I'm going to try to keep track of this lot to see exactly how much profit I made on this, and I'm going to try to report back on Instagram so you guys can reconsider if you're not picking up lingerie. This is Lily of France. I'm going to see if there's any. I'm going to show you the label. I love selling Lily of France. It sells every time for me. I don't think I keep a piece in stock. I think people are really looking for this beautiful blue color. It is a long, a long gown, nightgown. So pretty. And like I said, this is already all washed. When I come home with lingerie, the first thing I do, even before I unpack my car, is get my washing machine going on a delicate cycle with just a little bit of detergent or soap so I can just wash them right away and air dry them, hang them right on hangers. So easy. You know, something like that to me is easier than cleaning hard goods or easier than cleaning uh, shoes for sure. Just putting them in the machine and then when the machine is done, you know, delicate cycle, you just hang them and they're ready to go. Some of these I might steam a little bit because I think they'll do well. Um, here is one called California Dynasty. It looks like a vintage tag. I don't know this label, but I'm going to show it to you. Now, when I talk about vintage lingerie, I'm going to say the oldest piece that I've ever found is probably 1920s and all the way up to 1980s, I would still consider uh, vintage. Even 1990s, some people consider vintage 30 years old. Some people now consider vintage 20 years old. So even 2000 would be vintage. Does that all make sense? All right. So this is this gown. Seems to be like a midi, like a mid calf or lower calf. The detail on this is so pretty. What a beautiful lace. And I'm going to see if it says, this sounds like it was made in the United States, California dynasty. Uh, exclusive, gives you all of the wash instructions. Made in the USA. So just gorgeous. The next gown is just stunningly beautiful. This is Lily of France again, size medium. Here is the label. This seems to be a bridal gown and the lace is gorgeous. When you find higher end pieces, usually the lace is very intricate or you could just tell quality lace from far away. This is also union made. I see the little tag in there. We'll take a look at that. So that means made in the USA and it is the Lily of France label. And then on the back, it gives you the little uh, logo or emblem that says uh, made in the United States. I don't know what I'll get for these pieces. I haven't run comps for any of these. Now, if it is a separate piece, of course, it's going to be, you know, less. But if you have the nightgown and the robe, you can more than double the price of just the gown. So say you're going to sell a gown for $30 and you have the robe. Instead of getting $60, you should be able to get $70 or $75 because people really want the sets. When I first got to the vendor's table, I asked her if she had any Victoria's Secret, the gold label, and um, I don't think I said the gold label. I just said, do you have Victoria's Secret? She wasn't sure because she was selling for somebody else. This is Victoria's Secret's the gold label. I do better with this label than any of the other labels for Victoria's Secret. So I'm going to show it to you. And again, a little chemise. I think that they're just higher quality, the gold label. I think it was a fancier. I don't know if it was a bridal line. Stunningly beautiful. I wish I had the robe to this because this would do really well with a little, a little short robe, but I just found the one piece. These nightgowns are just beautiful. I didn't find any stains. They don't even have a lot of wear to them. And then the last set I want to show you is a true set. I was thrilled to find them. It is the nightgown. I'm going to take it off the hanger so we can take a look at it. And this 
This is made by, see if I can pronounce it, Bert Yellen, Y-E-L-I-N, for Iris. I think that says Iris, I-R-I-S, -I Iris. Made in USA, right on the tag. Beautiful. It's got more of a cotton feel rather than the um, silk or the satin feel. And I was so thrilled to find the matching robe. Look how vintage this is. This is gorgeous. How could you not feel pretty wearing one of these gowns? All right, guys, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Hit that like and subscribe button. I am closing in on 70,000 subscribers. Yep, I'm keeping count. I'm keeping watch because I am really excited if I'm able to get to 100,000 by the end of the year. Fingers crossed. All right, and if you want to purchase anything that you see, know that most of this is going to be listed in my eBay store within probably a week to two weeks. And don't forget to check out some of my favorite items and products things that you guys ask about all the time, they will be linked in my Amazon affiliate links in the show's notes. All right, hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, go out and get what's yours.